Hi everyone, welcome to our third episode of our five-part series on Mary, our mother, star of the new evangelization to commemorate the month of Mary in May. Last week, we explored how Mary is the cause of our joy. We hear how she brings great joy to Elizabeth when she visited her with Jesus in her womb. We learned that Mary went without delay to care for Elizabeth. We too are called to be like Mary. We are to bring Jesus and share his love with our family members, our friends, and the poor and needy, and those who do not yet know Jesus. Today, we have Audrey with us, who will be part of our session today. Welcome, Audrey. Thank you, Monsignor Heng. Hi, everyone. I'm Audrey. I hope you enjoyed the last two episodes with us. Mother Mary is very important to me because she is my mother, my intercessor, and my comforter. I go to her in my times of need and my times of trial, and I know that she prays for me. This is my secret, the rosary. And the rosary is a really special prayer because when Mother Mary appeared to the three children, she told the children to pray the rosary. She said, I am the lady of the rosary. And many people don't know this, but you know, the rosary is such a powerful weapon to protect us from evil. But on top of that, the rosary is a really powerful prayer as it allows us to meditate on the life of Jesus. So we enter into the mysteries of the life of Jesus in a really profound way. And I love the rosary. You can pray it with your family and your friends and your loved ones. So today we'll go deeper into the third joyful mystery. So children, let us prepare our hearts to listen to the word of God. We shall begin with listening to the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 2, verses 1 to 20, that tells us the circumstances of the Christmas story in which Jesus was born. You may wish to take your Bibles and read along. I invite you now to light a candle before I proclaim the Word of God to remind us that Jesus who came into the world is the light of the world that dispels the darkness of sin, evil and death and shares His light with us. The Lord be with you. A proclamation of the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Now at this time, Caesar Augustus issued a decree for a census of the whole world to be taken. This census, the first, took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to his own town to be registered. So Joseph set out from the town of Nazareth in Galilee and traveled up to Judea to the town of David called Bethlehem, since he was of David's house and line, in order to be registered together with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. When they were there, the time came for her to have her child, and she gave birth to a son, her firstborn. She wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. In the countryside close by, there were shepherds who lived in the fields and took it in turns to watch their flocks during the night. The angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone round them. They were terrified, but the angel said, Do not be afraid. Listen, I bring you news of great joy, a joy to be shared by the whole people. Today in the town of David, a Saviour has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. And here is a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly, with the angel, there was a great throng of the heavenly hosts, praising God and singing, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and peace to men who enjoy His favour. Now when the angels had gone from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, 
let us go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. So they hurried away and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in the manger. When they saw the child, they repeated what they had been told about him. And everyone who heard it was astonished at what the shepherds had to say. As for Mary, she treasured all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds went back, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen. It was exactly as they had been told. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us now take a moment to let the Word of God touch our hearts. So let us take a moment now and let this song fill our hearts. Do, do. Oh, 
when the early church fathers defended Mary as the mother of God and Jesus as one person, both man and God, the people of Ephesus were so happy when she was declared as the mother of God. They went on the streets and they chanted, Mary, mother of God, Mary, mother of God, Mary, mother of God. And this is the prayer that we know today when we say in the Hail Mary. Cool, right? Now you know. Children, I'm sure you still remember that we began to reflect on today's Christmas story at the first joyful mystery of the Rosary, which is the Annunciation of the Angel Gabriel to Mary, who told her, You are to conceive and bear a son through the power of the Holy Spirit, and you must name him Jesus. And Mary answered, I am the handmaid of the Lord. Let what you have said be done to me and the angel left her. Today, as we reflect on the third joyful mystery of the Rosary, which is the Nativity of Jesus in Bethlehem, there are many beautiful truths about Jesus, Mary and Joseph, the shepherds, that will help us to appreciate and love God even more. To enter into the meaning and the mystery of the Nativity of Jesus, I would like to suggest that we ask for God's inspiration to imagine very creatively and to take a step backward from what we do every day to reflect on the beauty of the world that God has created. If we are to look at all of these creation of God closely, like how an eagle soars into the sky and a butterfly flutters from flower to flower, and the millions and billions of so many different types of creation of God, we will be truly amazed at how perfect and beautiful God's creation is. God not only created the earth, He also created the whole universe. Now, the most perfect and the most beautiful of all of God's creation is the creation of human beings. Hi there. Hello. Of you and I. This is because God created human beings in His image and likeness. And most importantly of all, God created us out of love for us. And God loves us so totally that we are each God, our Father's son or daughter. Children, this Christmas story is about the most perfect, most powerful and the most loving God deciding to be born into our world fully as a human baby like all of us and yet remaining fully God. And then, who did God choose to be born into this world? God chose Mary, who is without any sin, to be the mother who will conceive through the power of the Holy Spirit. And then, today's Gospel of St. Luke tells us that Jesus, the Son of God, chose the humblest of all places to be born, in the purity and simplicity of a stable of the cow and donkey, and in the piercing coal of the night, instead of being born in the riches of the palaces of kings and emperors. Why is this so? When parents give birth to their child, they would choose the best and the most expensive hospitals, because every parent wants to give their child the best that they can afford. However, God who is almighty, who has chosen to be born in this world, has chosen to be born not in palaces because God's kingdom is not about the glory of the material riches and the popularity of the secular world. Because God wants to tell us that all these secular riches are passing and we cannot bring them with us when we die. What is most important in life is to love God with our whole heart, mind, soul and strength and to love one another as Jesus the Messiah has shown us how to love. John chapter 13 verse 34 and in living and loving as Jesus has shown us, we are all to return to our heavenly home 
by receiving the gift of eternal happiness after we die. And so Jesus the Messiah came into this world in the poverty and humility of being born in a stable and he left this world in the humility of the pain and suffering of being crucified on the cross that everyone be saved. Let us not be misled into thinking that when God chose to be born in the poverty of a stable, God is not praising and glorifying the immense suffering of the poor and marginalized of the world who do not even have the basic necessities of life like clean water, proper food, housing, clothing, education, and health facilities. Jesus, in fact, condemns such poverty as the evil of this world, where millions and millions of the poor are being oppressed and treated unjustly and exploited. God came into our world in poverty to identify and be in solidarity with them and proclaim that all injustices and evil and sin in the world must cease as every person is a child of God and is therefore precious to God. This is why the good news of the birth of Jesus is first proclaimed to the shepherds and not to the kings in the palaces. The shepherds are the poorest of the poor in Israel and it is to these people who are rejected by their society that the good news of Jesus' birth is first proclaimed by the angel. Children, there are many beautiful spiritual lessons we can learn in this event of the nativity of Jesus. One of them is what we can learn from Mary and Joseph, who had what we call the virtue of spiritual poverty. This virtue is also referred to in the Gospel of St. Matthew chapter 5, verse 3, that says, Happy are the poor in spirit. Theirs is the kingdom of God. One way of explaining this is first to ask ourselves, when a person is full of pride, we describe the person as being full of himself or herself. This refers to the person as being so self-centered, arrogant, and one who does not admit his or her faults and failures, and does not care about the views and needs of others. As such a person is self-absorbed and lives for himself or herself. However, in contrast, a person who has spiritual poverty is one who loves God fully and wholeheartedly and selflessly and joyfully. To have the virtue of spiritual poverty is to be God-centered and Christ-like in all that we do and how we live and love others like Jesus to the point of giving up our lives for the sake and salvation of others. To have such a virtue of spiritual poverty is to have the true spiritual wisdom and humility to become more like Jesus every day of our lives and to live God's will at all times. Let us pause for a few moments to reflect on these questions. First, how is God calling you to draw people closer to Him? Second, how are you growing in holiness of being more like Mary and Joseph? Third, how are you sharing the love of Jesus with others? Thank you, Monsignor Heng. Fun fact number two. The title, Mother of God, that was used in the early church by the early Christians, were used as early as the third century. That's a thousand seven hundred years ago. Can you believe it? My relationship with my mom was a little bit challenging, so I didn't really know Mother Mary. But it was only in the last, I would say, 10 years of my life 
that I really began to know who Our Lady was and I know she's a big part of my conversion experience. And since then, Mother Mary has been revealing herself to me in a very profound way and I know that she's always praying for me and in my times of difficulty, I know that she's gonna be there for me. In this segment, we will now listen to how we can make room for Jesus in our hearts. Did you have any pain the time when you went? Did you cry? <laughs> how, how come you're so brave? Where did you get your power? <laughs> what is that? <laughs> From Jesus. From Jesus, is it? Jesus gave you the power? <laughs> is it powerful? <laughs> it is? <laughs> you're a brave girl, huh? Yes. Yes, make mm mm. Okay. Because he said yes, he has opened my husband's heart to the Catholic Church, and how that has transformed my family. The first time I I've heard and I saw Father Aro was at Saint Teresa's Church during Christmas Mass many years back. At that point of time, I wasn't Catholic. But I remember the church was so beautiful. And then after that, I told my girlfriend then that oh, if one day we do get married, it should be in this church. And guess what? We need to get this father to, <laughs> to marry us. <laughs> Lo and behold, um, we got married in the church. And when I approached Father Aro, I was at first quite scared or apprehensive. I was not Catholic at that point of time. And Father Aro didn't judge me. He's such a loving man and you can see it in his eyes and in his body language. He's not here to judge me. He always made it seem that God loves you so much, Sanjeev and, and, and Clarissa. Your marriage is really made in heaven. So I will marry you in this church. And to top it off, till today I live by his very good advice during my marriage homily. He says, Sanjeev, you marry Clarissa. Clarissa, you marry Sanjeev. And everything is going to change from now. You are not here to be the best pilot in the world. You're not best here to be the best lawyer in the world anymore. From today onwards, you will be the best husband or father in the world you can ever be. From today onwards, you will be the best wife and mother you can ever be in your life. When I was expecting Kiara, we found out that she has hypoplastic left heart syndrome. It is a very rare congenital heart condition that requires um, three invasive operations. And it's not a cure, it only prolongs her life. And we were advised to abort. My next question is it, okay, let's fix it. And then everyone's staring at me. No, 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 we, you can't fix this. Oh, but I thought men can fix everything. Right? We can fix aeroplanes, you can go to the stars. And the heart is almost okay in the ship, just that part, right? Cannot fix. <laughs> then the surgeon looks at me and says, During the pregnancy, every Saturday I would go for a novena. And I would just spend time there just talking to Mary and trying to understand how she did it. How she had to watch her son suffer. And we prayed and we prayed and we continued to just lift it all up to God and say, I trust in you, I trust in you, I trust in you, you know. So that this little blessing that you have given us doesn't have to suffer. Aside from the heart, the baby is functioning well. He, she's growing well in, in the womb. I don't know what kind of challenges that will come up along the way, but it does not mean that she will not thrive. It does not mean that she should be denied this chance. And it is not my place to take that chance or this, this life away. And uh, I was doing RCIA at that time. I wasn't a Catholic. I didn't know who Mother Mary was. And the one thing I learned is, you can do so many things. You can talk to a friend. You can... Um, cry. Cry. Non-stop. You can read. You can do whatever it is. But the one thing which truly will heal and intervene is doing the rosary. You just do it. Yes. 
and keeps you focused on God as well. And, and at the beginning, doing the rosary wasn't <clears throat> something I fully understood. Coming from a Hinduism background, I was very afraid of idol worship. I had a godpa who took me out and said, "Okay, we're going to do a Ros Marian walk." So we'll walk from OLPS to Holy Fam to Queen of Peace, and we'll keep doing that. And we're doing rosary all the way, you know. And we're lifting up Kiara in, in the process. And and the idea is do the rosary. You will understand it when you will need to understand it. But now you follow me and we do it in, in that aspect. And truly, <laughs> it is of uh, uh, great power. And till today, that's the secret weapon. When the baby was born, when Kiara came out, you know, they, they were just so mesmerized by how beautiful and how perfect she was and how pink she was because everyone was expecting a blue baby, yeah, with uh, not enough oxygen. But she came out beautifully. We were just so grateful, you know, that Mary did hear all our prayers. That everyone who touched her, every nurse, every surgeon, every anesthetist, anesthetist, everyone who walked in and out of the surgical theatre and all that, they were so important. If Mother Mary wasn't next to her, or the, all the angels and the saints were not next to her, it can, be, it can go very, very wrong, very fast, you see. We saw that in her second operation. A five-hour procedure turned out to be 14 hours. At that point of time, we knew that something had, you know, cropped up. But um, when Kiara came out of the second operation, I got a shock of my life. I didn't expect to see her actual heart beating in front of me because her chest was split open. They wouldn't sew it up. They had to monitor the whole thing. And this is my daughter with all the tubes in the entire body. And I can tell you, at the point of time, God will give you the strength. You just need to understand what is your role. My role was to storm to heaven. And boy, I did that every second. The doctor had a role, the surgeon had a role, the nurses had a role. Everybody had a role. It was very funny because the surgeon's not Christian. So he's seen that we've put um, the rosary in the room and that we're praying. And she was trying to be funny. So he asked me, how do you know that I'm not God? And I was trying to be funny about it. I said, no, I know you're not God, but I know that God sent you. And then, you know, he, he just got stunned. <laughs> he sent you at the right time and he sends the right people at the right time. But since I've offered Kiara up to Mother Mary, we have been so surrounded. We have been met people from church, you know, and even my neighbour downstairs turns up and says, you know, we have the neighbourhood rosary. <laughs> and every month they invite us to come and my children love it. They love to come and Kiara's picked it up and they, all the children know how to follow the beats. They're actually there for the makan, but, <laughs> but, but it helps, you know, and Mother Mary's just been such a beautiful mother to me and to Kiara. More importantly, she's been the one that sends me the graces, the advice, the faith to just keep my eyes on her son. God knows how to time his stuff to perfection. And we were at the review, the doctor, when he used his ultrasound, he, he's like, you know, it's a miracle. The liquid is all cleared out. In fact, I want to remove all her stitches and he removed all the stitches and she did not cry. There's no more surgery, there's, there's no more stitches and there's no more fluid <laughs> all in one day that the surgeon can even say she healed herself. <laughs> he can't explain it how all the water suddenly disappeared. The journey has just um, brought us closer together, reinforced our faith and our marriage. marriage. Marriage has been so... You would imagine uh, that, you know, having so much to go through, of course you would argue and fight and tear each other apart because there's so much emotion blocking the way of your what you see, right? And, um, and how you think. But I think um, with Mary's intercession and and the Holy Spirit just working through us, we've, we've learned to back off, we've learned to give each other time and to respect each other and, and that and always to remember that God lives, Jesus lives in each of us. God doesn't make the disease, God didn't make the condition, but sometimes He allows it to happen. And you know what, why we need to ask why or understand or accept 
why the condition was allowed to happen. And this journey has allowed us to see that this condition, this this blessing, it is a blessing in disguise. You know, this journey that we've had to go through has really brought a lot of people to prayer and um, has brought our family closer, has brought us closer to God. And uh, we learn to trust and rely on Him so much more for every little thing, you know. And uh, trust in Him that, that it will be alright. There's, there's always something that we can do. And, and we keep moving forward towards, towards God. Thank you, Mother Mary, for the birth of your Son, Jesus, on earth and in our hearts. Thank you for being the Mother of God. We hope you enjoyed doing your rosaries with your family last week and also praying together. This week, we will actually see how we as a family can create the stained glass nativity set. Once you've completed your stained glass nativity scene, you can post them in this link here. We invite you, children, and your family to do something every day during the week to share the gift of Jesus with others and draw them closer to God. We encourage everyone to rise to the challenge as a family encouraging and cheering each one on. So the challenge of this week is look out for your Jesus moments throughout the week. Share with one another how Jesus is present in your lives this week. All children, as part of this week's challenge, you could offer a word of encouragement, a word of positivity or a word of gratitude to someone close to you, your parents, your siblings, or even pick up the phone, you know, to call an elderly auntie, uncle, or relative who might be alone. Extend that word of encouragement and bring some hope and joy to people around you. Also, children, we invite you and your families to pray the rosary daily. If you and your families would like to be part of the virtual rosary together with Monsignor Heng at the Cathedral of the Good Shepherd, send in a video of one decade of the rosary of you and your family praying together. This is the prayer that invites you and I to pray together. 
we fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. In the present tragic situation, when the whole world is prey to suffering and anxiety, we fly to you, Mother of God and our Mother, and seek refuge under your protection. Virgin Mary, turn your merciful eyes towards us amidst this coronavirus pandemic. Comfort those who are distraught and mourn their loved ones who have died. Fill with hope those who are troubled by the uncertainty of the future and the consequences of the economy and employment. Protect those doctors, nurses, health workers and volunteers who are on the front line of this emergency and are risking their lives to save others. Be close to those who assist the sick night and day and to priests who in their pastoral concern and fidelity to the gospel are trying to help and support everyone. Blessed Virgin, illumine the minds of men and women engaged in scientific research that they may find effective solution to overcome this virus. Support national leaders that with wisdom, solicitude and generosity, they may come to the aid of those lacking the basic necessities of life. Beloved Mother, help us realize that we are all members of one great family and make us strong in faith, persevering in service, constant in prayer. Mary, consolation of the afflicted, embrace all your children in distress and pray that God will search out His all-powerful hand and free us from this terrible pandemic so that life can serenely resume its normal course. To you who shine on our journey as a sign of salvation and hope, do we entrust ourselves. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary. Amen. These are extracts from the letter of Pope Francis to the faithful for the month of Mary this year. Thank you, Monsignor Heng. That's it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. And we'll see you again very soon. Thank you for joining us and see you again next week. Take care and God bless you. God bless you. And in the meantime, remember to pray the rosary with your family and loved ones. Bye!